Morning world, welcome to Thursday, 28th of October. It's all gonna happen today, apparently. Right, so, so far this morning, just to bring up the speed, um, I went down to Moor Valley at Barclay and bought two feed barriers. Now I had a choice of feed barriers with the timber foot on them or feed barriers without. <clears throat> I've gone for the barriers without for the simple reason is the timber foot is probably 18 inches, at least 18 inches, maybe even two foot deep. And for our little Dexters, they were a bit shorter, um, it just means that putting the register and feeding is it's a bit difficult. So we've gone with the uh, non-timber based barriers. One, they're about 35, 40 quid a piece cheaper. And two, I can set them a bit lower. Um, so anyway, I've been and bought them. Didn't know they had them in stock, but they did. Got them, I'm just on the way down to fetch them now. And I thought, well, I'll give Tim our barn builder a ring and see if he can come up with his mag drill and drill six holes for me so I can actually make the barriers. Um, so I rang Tim up and he said, that was spooky. He said, I was about to call you. Really, why is that? He said, I said, was there news on me concrete barriers? He goes, strange you should say that. He said that even though I asked them to give me at least a couple of days notice when they were coming, they've ring, rung me just now, literally just now, to tell me they're on their way and they'll be here this afternoon. Brilliant, um, concrete barriers are coming. Downside is, we don't know if we can get hold of Chris, Manitou pilot, to come and give us and unload them because these things weigh, I think, just over a ton a piece. And my skid steer's not gonna, not gonna do it. It's not, not gonna handle it. So, so we need Chris. Where are you, Chris? Right. I think it's one of those things. Is if we can't find Chris, Tim's gonna have to see if he can borrow a teleander or something from somewhere or something to get these panels off so right so we're on our way to Moor Valley uh, to pick up some feed barriers I haven't told Mrs P I've bought them yet I'm sure to get a telling off when I get back <clears throat> hopefully I'll get some holes drilled this afternoon I can get them mounted um, I can then use I think what we're going to do we're going to use some of our old existing um, cattle hurdles and gates, whatever gates we got, to finish building the um, indoor, uh, the second half of the indoor cattle housing. So we are ready to go, more or less, for when I'm bringing the young stock home, which will be, well, probably in the next few days. The weather doesn't look very, very promising. Apparently we're going to get some wet tonight and tomorrow. So they might have to come back sooner than anticipated, if I can get them in if I can get them in. I had a phone call last night from um, one of our, I don't know if he's a subscriber or channel follower, um, farmer from over to the side of the river. We'll call him Hugh, because that's his name. So, hi Hugh. So, very interesting conversation with a very interesting guy last night. Um, I think he said he keeps uh, limbs but he was interested in maybe taking a couple of my Dexter heifers off me and um, starting a second herd of little Dexters, which is fine. And I've said to him, he's welcome to come over and see us once the cattle are all in. And if he wants to pick out a couple of our heifers to start a little herd, then I'm sure we can negotiate something. Um, this would be the time of year if I can sell heifers this time of year. It's fine for me. Uh, it's a bit of a bugger with the TB testing and the pre-movement and all that, but it's a necessary evil. Um, but yeah, if I can uh, sell a few heifers um, before the winter uh, winter season comes in, a bit less feeding for me, a bit less muck, so and a few quid. A few quid's always welcome, isn't it? Might even pay for me feed barriers, maybe.
was bigger than me. I wasn't going to win that argument. Welcome to Mole Valley. Hey, yeah, uh, I got some feed barriers to pick up. He's put them back down there for me. Two feed barriers. They're down there somewhere. Ah, there they are. That's them. Strap, strap, strap. Maybe even two straps. Don't look very expensive on the trailer. <laughs> when I say they don't look very expensive, there's not an awful lot to them. I think they were £211 each plus that. Uh, whereas a year ago they'd have probably been 110 ish Got to have them. Can't not have them, so well you can. I could forge something up, but then all of a sudden when cattle escape because something's not fixed properly or done properly, that extra couple hundred quid was worth it. It's a big yellow helicopter hovering above us and around us. I think he's looking at either power cables or um, gas lines or something. Now I just got to get out of here. This is always a Take your life in your hand, ain't you? Bit so. Come on, hurry up! Hurry up! Go for it! He's hovering above the garage for some reason. Just in case anyone is interested, that two barriers and 
uh, two sh three short chains and three long chains is what 556 pounds and 66 is that or 86 I got my glasses on 556 pounds for those it's enough to make you want to weep but we always intended to put some feed barriers in here um, originally I was going to get Tim to make me some because the slats on these are quite wide and we're probably going to have to put a ratchet strap or something through the middle of these just to stop the smaller animals going through but the plan is, is I'm going to put the two middle sections so one in there one in there where that gate is um, and then I'm going to split this shed into two so basically I've got a feed barrier on both sides um, although I might give them everything it's just a case of if I've got the shed split into two I can clean or bed one half out at a time if you know what I mean so we've got the vet gate which is that fella there so if I use the hurdles but two hurdles down the back there and I can always chain the vet gate as well to the um, post at the back so it can't be moved I can then put the vet gate in the middle so I can have stock one side or the other and that just means that if I, like I, say, if I want to muck out or if I want to bed up I can do one side and then the other side or whatever else and they'll have feed both sides they'll have water at that end, water down that end it just just keeps it manageable so um, yeah the original idea was we were going to put stock over there and keep this as a, a way through just for um, traffic coming through and everything else but you know what it might work out just as well that I put cattle this side and I put all my storage in there anyway so it, it works either way it's just not what we planned but it's, it's doable but I do need to clean all this lot out It won't take long. Right, well I, I was thinking about starting to move all that in there, into there, but if the panels are coming, I don't know if we're fitting many today or if they're just being dropped off, don't know. Uh, probably better off to keep this side of the shed as uncluttered as we can for the time being. I mean, as it is, I've made it life a bit harder for the Manitou pilot because I've got still got holes for him to negotiate. I'm here, get right now. Here, manage that, no problem. He's an expert. Right. It's 10 to midday. I can hear the kettle, it's calling me. Chris is here. Let me tell you later. Your nice little obstacle course. I'm so thoughtful, it's untrue. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Right. I'm going to punch you in there.
um, stone. All that came out of that stone, and that's just what I picked up after they just tipped it. Yeah. Thank you! Thank you! Safe journey! Thank you! Alright, so the plan is we're going to try and get a couple of these up tonight if we can, but we are losing light rapidly, so... And battery. You might have to come back tomorrow and see how far we got. The pattern is right, it's shed. Take him out a bit more. Yeah, you're, oh, you came. You came to me a bit then. Is that right? Yeah, he's supposed to go that way. Well, he's he's right where he is now, I think. But keep coming, keep coming, keep going. Whoop, dying a bit. That oh, looks very good. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. A good digger. Sounds like you're doing the job. No, I'm not too good, you think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can let go, Nick, eh? Yep. Go in then? He's in there, yeah. Oh, well done. You can push it that way a little bit and then down. Yeah, down. It's just sat on that bit of clay there again. Yeah. No, I think it'd be right there for a minute. Yeah. Nicely done. He sat on the concrete and that bit of clay as well. 
Yeah. It's easier for the outside? Yeah. All right. Well, I can see the joint there and I can... All right, okay. I know Timber might get wet. It is raining now, yeah. stopped playing, it's piddling down in there, and although I want to get the panels up, I don't want to get soaked doing it, so I think we're coming back maybe the weekend to do a bit more, and then next Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, get the rest of it done, so I've got plenty to be going on with.